Um, I haven't been paying attention to these plants. I kind of had a lot of stuff crowded around, but as a result of not paying attention, I let this get out of hand. It's aphids all over this chocolate and reaper plant. And see how the leaves are already getting gnarled and messed up. And I'm going to treat all of the plants around it. One telltale sign of aphids. You don't see them right off as a little sticky residue. They secrete. You'll see that in little um, stuff on leaves. Pretty bad infestation. So what I usually do, how a tree kind of depends on the plant. On a bigger plant I would lop off these terminal ends because that's where aphids like to congregate where all the new growth is occurring. Since the plant's relatively small, I may just um, cut some of that off, but um, not all of it. But I'll, what I usually um, always treat with is a pyrethrin, and I mix it fresh from concentrate. So I'll show how I do that, and we'll do a little um, test exposure with an aphid with the uh, pyrethrin mix. Really can't stand these things. So, Sickening when you see these on your plants. And they're really, I mean, this is like the beginning of an aphid apocalypse. They multiply so quickly. Left unchecked, they'll just destroy your plants. So let's get busy mixing some pyrethrin. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to mix this. This is the product I use. It's a Bonod brand pyrethrin concentrate. And this is the best stuff to use. You don't want to buy the already mixed uh, pyrethrin base sprays. They're not very effective. You want to get the concentrate. And it's also important to mix it when you need it. Don't mix it and then use it five months later. Just use it after a couple of days, dump it out, and you need it again, mix a fresh batch. So I've already, um, this is a quart size sprayer. And I've already uh, mostly filled it with water. Not real exact with my measurements, but, um, I do um, one to two tablespoons, and I'm going to use this teaspoon as a measure so I can just throw it away. So I'll shake this up really well. So three teaspoons is a tablespoon, so I'll mix three to six of these, probably four or five. One of these will last you a long time. If you mix just a little batch at a time. I've had that for a couple of years and it's it's maybe down to there. But I'll put a link in the description on where you can buy it. And I shake this up really well. And then I just drench the plant top to bottom, tops and bottoms of leaves around the base of the plant. Anywhere there might be aphids. So let's go ahead and I'm going to drench the plant, but I want to show you up close how this affects the aphids. So we'll take like a like a single aphid or two and expose it to the pyrethrin mix. And basically what the pyrethrin does is it shuts down the insect central nervous system and that's how it kills it. Uh, there's actually more to it than that, but that's, that's uh, long and short of what happens. Um, so anyway, let's do a little test and I'll show you how I treat the plant.
Alright, so I've got, um, I just brought the whole deck out here. I'm sure they're on this other one too. See they're under the leaves and I saw some adult aphids they are winged and flying around all over my other plants. I'm going to have to treat all of my plants. The other thing you can do is like blast them with water and soak them in a soapy solution. I'm a little short on time. I drenched especially underneath. See all the little dead ones down here. You don't want to get this stuff on your skin if you can help it, because it'll absorb through your skin. It's not good for you, and it also kill any beneficials. Just keep that in mind. But it is safe to eat the fruit from a plant that's been treated with pyrethrin pretty soon after. See, I don't... With aphids, if you um, use half measures, you're always going to have aphids, but you really just lay it to it. It'll be all right. So that's um that's that plant and um, I'm gonna treat my others too and that should take care of my indoor infestation. Uh, a week or two since I sprayed these and um, this one it took a little bit of damage some of the leaves. Part of it was possibly because the leaves are already damaged from the aphids but I did hit it pretty heavily and I wouldn't change anything that I did because all of the New growth it looks fine, and I don't see any aphids on the plant anywhere. Some of the few leaves I had in the center, they were like just encrusted with aphids, they just fell off, but a lot of new growth popping up. This is the other, other one. Looks okay. And also treated this guy, this Blue Christmas, this plant here looks fine, this Caramel 7 pot looks good. So I just wanted to share that. A lot of people, I mean everybody's got a way to deal with aphids, so when anybody asks, this is what I do, I'm just sharing it. I mean it's not the only way to do it. I'm sure it's not the best way, it's just, just what I use, have been using, and I'm pretty aggressive with this for a reason, because I don't don't want to keep aphids on the plant. You know, these could get reinfested with aphids, because the pyrethrin wears off really quickly, so if another aphid flies, flies in the house and lays eggs, it's going to have aphids again, and I'll treat it again, but I've never had any problems with pyrethrin not killing the aphids that are on the plant. So that's what, um, what I like to use it. Anyway, hope you like that. Um, thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.